Hello lovely people. How I know it's autumn is that it is currently drizzling outside and it's a bit grey and as I'm filming this, I have a cold. It has arrived. I don't really do regular TBR videos because I'm a super duper mood reader. But autumn is always a particular season that I feel like there are particular books that really suit it. Um, and I did one last year and I read some really good books as a result. So I thought, hey, let's do another autumnal TBR. This is a little bit loose, but um, I'll try and do a little wrap up at the end and actually see which ones of these I've read. So I'm going to start off with two books which I am definitely going to read because these were in my 10 books I want to read this year video. Um, starting with The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I keep mentioning this one because I've specifically been saving it for autumn because I understand it takes place in autumn. This is a fantasy series that I have heard so many good things about. Booktube absolutely adores this and I'm hoping that I will too. I've generally been trying to avoid spoilers so I actually don't really know what happens in this or what the, the concept is. So um, that's about as much detail as I can give you on that one. But probably already know because loads of people have read it and I'm in the minority. <laughs> um, the next book is a classic that I've been saving for autumn and that's The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. My understanding is that this is like a gothic mystery novel. Um, Wilkie Collins is an author who I've heard of but I've never actually read anything of. Um, I think this is also adapted into a musical and I think I have heard a couple of songs from the musical but I don't remember thematically what they're singing about. So again, don't know a lot about this. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be a really fun, like, Victorian gothic mystery, presumably about a woman in white. We'll find out, but these are two I've been saving for all this time. Moving on, um, to tie in with Spooky Spooky Halloween, one of my co-workers has lent me Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. The only, I, well, I've read, I've read Carrie by Stephen King and I really liked it. I tried to read it when I was, like, 13 and it was a really bad idea. <laughs> because it's scary and I'm not good with horror so I never finished it but um, I've heard good things I know Pet Cemetery's just been adapted into a film again, I haven't seen it um, I'm hoping that this is going to be the type of spooky that will really get me in the mood for Halloween but also not like give me terrible, terrible nightmares and it'd be interesting to read more Stephen King because I found Carrie more accessible than I was expecting based on my memories of reading it but then again I did read it at an entirely age-inappropriate time the next one is a general author. I haven't decided which of these two books I'm going to read, but last year in my autumn TBR I set myself to read Meadowland by John Lewis Stemple and I read it at the perfect time. Um, I work on a converted farm, so like it's largely still a working farm, but there's just um, like a section of it which has offices on, and I read it surrounded by nature and it was absolutely lovely. So I've got two of his books which my mum has lent me to read. So The Wood, The Life and Times of Cockshut Wood, I think is going to be quite similar to Measureland, where presumably we're just tracing this one wood and looking at all the nature that's happening there. Um, the other one is The Secret Life of the Owl. I read The Secret Life of the Oak, and it was a really nice just mixture of, like, random things to do with a topic. So, like, let's look at oaks in literature. Let's look at oaks in, actually, like, their role in the land. Um, how do oaks change as the seasons change? I'm imagining that this is going to be a very similar thing, but for owls. But it's a lovely cover, both of them are, so I'm excited for that. Just to do two more pieces of non-fiction, um, I also want to read How Not to Be a Boy by Robert Webb. This is his um, autobiography, which is also looking at sort of like gender roles and what we impose upon ideas of being a boy and being a man and growing up and not fitting with those and the constraints of those and that sort of thing. That's my understanding. Um, I have a friend who every time we visit each other we do a book swap um, and this is the one she lent me. She said it was really, really good. So I'm hoping to fit that one, this one in in autumn because she's coming to visit me in autumn and I need to give it back to her. <laughs> Um, the other piece of non-fiction is another one that has a time constraint on it. This is Anna of Cleve, Queen of Secrets by Alison Weir. It's part of her Six Tudor Queens series. I've only ever read Alison Weir non-fiction. I think this is fiction, she says, despite having just said that she was going to talk about two pieces of non-fiction. I got that wrong. I'm sorry, I'm adult. Um, I think this is fiction. I'm going to a talk which Alison Weir is giving with my friend. We're both into... Well, she's really into Tudor history. I am into all history, really. <laughs> <laughs> just like let's not limit ourselves but um i grew up reading a lot of tudor history and so she's been inspiring me to dip back into it again recently i think that there was some controversy in this because i think alison weir is putting forward uh, an idea that the reason why henry didn't want to be married to anne of cleves is that um he could tell that she wasn't a virgin i think that that's something that was 
sort of bandied about when he was trying to get out of the marriage, but actually, um, you know, what a lot of historical accounts say is that actually Anne Cleves was just very naive and she didn't even understand the, the, semant the I was going to say semantics, that's not right, like the actual workings of what, what consummating a marriage is, um, and that's why they were able to get it annulled. Um, so I, again, I'm sort of, I'm going in a bit blind, but I am going to talk by Alice and Weir on this book, so it would actually be quite good if I read this book before November when I'm seeing her, and then I can get her to sign it and actually, like, know what it's about. I'm also going to try and finish a series that I've been reading recently, so I want to read The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. Um, as Miriam at Between Lines and Life will know, I've been reading my way through the Raven cycle. She knows because I keep sending her Twitter messages and being like, oh my god, this has happened. So um, I've been doing a video, I have a video in the works, whereby every time I finish one of these books I film like my immediate thoughts on upon finishing it, and so um, hopefully I'm going to be posting that soon once I've read this one because I thought it might be fun to just see like my progression reading the series and then wrap it all up with some final thoughts on the series at the end. So I am thoroughly enjoying this series, I do have lots of thoughts on it, I do want to finish it, and I think finishing it in autumn might be really good, I feel like those sort of vibes really fit with where this series is at. So. I'm excited for that one. To move on to some sci-fi, I also want to read The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. I meant to read this because I meant to take part in Time Infinity and Beyond Readers on round three, and this was one of, because it's all sci-fi, and this was one of the group books, and I was like, perfect, I'll read this book, I'll do the readers on. What actually happened is because I was going to Harry Potter Studio Tour, I decided to reread the entire of the Harry Potter series, and I got distracted, and I didn't do any of Tome Infinity Readers on. I'm sorry. Um, that's a note. Also, want to finish my Harry Potter reread. I've got book six and seven left to read as of filming. So we're getting there, and I'll do a wrap-up video on that as well at some point. Um, again, don't know a lot about this because it's been one that's been very talked about, and I've been avoiding spoilers. I think that there's some sort of big... Um, it's called the, I think the Split, the Broken Earth series, that's what it's called, it's on the side. <laughs> Reading. Hey. Um, I think there's some sort of, like, massive natural disaster, and then, like, humanity's reaction to, reacting to that and stuff. I know it's part of a series, um, I do want to read the first book, and then see how I feel, and then see if I want to continue with it, but I have heard, again, really, really good things, so I'm excited for that one. Um, penultimately, I want to read Ovid Metamorphosed, edited by Philip Terry, which is a collection of short stories which are all inspired by tales from Ovid's Metamorphoses. Again, I think that autumn is a really good time because the leaves are changing and sort of we're transitioning, it's a transitional sort of phase. I felt like maybe transformation stories would tie in quite nicely with those sort of like visual changes um, that you're getting. So, um, and also this is the final book of my um, 10 lowest books, lowest rated books on my TBR. Um, list that I need to read. So once I've done this, I can do my wrap up of that. She's trying. Finally, we're going to end on another one, which is um, an idea, and I haven't picked what specific books yet, but one of my favourite videos that I've watched on BookTube recently was Jade at Jaded Reader did um, a dragon book recommendations, and it was like, it reminded me that I really love dragons, and it was so inspiring. I was just like, I want to read dragon books. So I have a choice of three, and I haven't decided which one I'm going to read yet, and I hauled all of these fairly recently, so you might be familiar. But um, they're all middle grades, so Max Kowalski didn't mean it by Susie Day, which I know it has dragons in, and it's also about sort of family and friendship and that sort of thing. Um, the Secret Dragon by Ed Clark, which is about um, a little girl who uh, finds a dragon and wants to keep it as a secret, but obviously dragons are hard to keep secret, so um, there's that. And then The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte, Metalston. I didn't realise this had dragons in, because when I hauled it I had a different edition that was sent to my work, and I've actually swapped it because this edition came in and I thought this edition was lovely, so I've given back the other one to work, and I've taken this one. But it has dragons on the cover, which does imply that as well as pirates and other shenanigans, there's going to be some dragon interactions in this. So. I haven't decided which one of these I want to do if I have the time, because this is apparently quite a hefty TBR I've set myself. Autumn is not that long. Um, but yes, hopefully one of those middle grade dragon books will be like a really lovely little dabble for me to do. Um, that's it. <laughs> this is a bit longer than I thought it was going to be when I sat down. But I would really love to hear, are there any books you've been saving for autumn? Are there any particular types of genres that you save for autumn? What does autumn make you want to read? What are your reading vibes? That sort of thing. And then also, as per usual, have you read any of these? Do you have any thoughts? I would love to hear all of these and more in the comments down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for something different.